Okay, these are the motivations. Uh, we were interested in biological flows, so we, we, are, we try to develop the numerical tool to handle complex flow simulations in this kind of uh, uh, field. Uh, we are interested in studying the flow in the circulatory system, the swimming of microorganisms or micro devices, uh, then also the transport of uh, arbitrarily shaped particles in blood vessels. Uh, the features that uh, these programs have in common is that uh, the flow is always unsteady, uh, three-dimensional, we can have transition to turbulence and then renormalization, complex geometries that of course can deform and move and we need to handle uh, fluid structure interactions. Uh, please let me stress that uh, since we have biological systems, uh, sometimes we have diversely scale elements, so we can go from cells to organ tissues, so we have different scales and sometimes it's not simple to discuss these kind of structures with simple continuum models. Uh, this is the reason why at the moment we selected a simplified structural solver that has sufficient flexibility to handle these problems in a, an accurate way. Uh, our effort of this year is uh, uh, Summarized here, we developed this numerical tool that uh, is based on a, a partitioned approach. So we have uh, different flow solvers and different, at the moment, just these two structural solvers that are coupled with a fluid structure interaction coupling in a strong way. So we have an incompressible DNS and LES solver. We have also a fully compressible solver that is based on the RANS approach and we can also handle conjugated transfer. And also we are developing a lattice Boltzmann uh, solver for the fluid part. On the structural part, at the moment we are using the interaction potential approach, so I know this is too easy to, to talk about, but this is how what, what we do now, and we have also a very simple finite elements uh, uh, membranes uh, solver. Uh, then we have also additional um, tools, that is the collision modeling part and uh, the FSI coupling algorithm. The code is parallel, and it's very easy to handle complex geometries directly from CAD and is relatively inexpensive from a computational point of view. Almost all the simulations I'm going to show you are, run, are running on my laptop, so it is relative, relatively inexpensive from this point of view. Uh, I will talk a little bit more about the incompressible uh, solver and the, the structural model, the simplified model. Uh, just let me uh, say that I, I divided the presentation in two parts, so an overview of the numerical methodology, nothing complex, and an overview of some of the applications, so in order to have discussion later. Now, about the flow solver, this is what we do at the moment. We have a finite difference flow solver. Uh, we use the fractional step approach. We have uh, a nonlinear, the nonlinear terms discretized by the adams bashford scheme, so explicitly. Uh, the linear terms are uh, discretized by the implicit uh, crank nicholson scheme. So we have this first version of the, of the equation where we solve the intermediate velocity. We correct this, this velocity with the immense boundary forcing in order to enforce the boundary condition due to the presence of the bodies. And then we evaluate this phi to correct the velocity to satisfy the uh, constraint of uh, conservation of uh, mass and also to update the pressure. This is second order accurate in space and time, and we have uh, staggered Cartesian grids that can be also uh, refined, but uh, we still maintain the Cartesian topology of the mesh, and this parallelized by MPI and OpenMP uh, techniques. Now, about the bodies, since we have this uh, Cartesian mesh, we are relying on immense boundary technique in order to impose the boundary conditions. Uh, the idea is to discretize the surface of, the, of our membranes or deformable bodies uh, with triangles. So we collect the mass of the, of the entire structures on the nodes of the triangles. We consider the centroids of the triangles are like Lagrangian markers, where we want to impose the boundary conditions. And then we have the edges that we use to uh, build the, the, the structural uh, response of the body. Uh, it is important to say that image body are discretized independently, uh, so uh, we can have a mesh a Lagrangian mesh resolution and Eulerian mesh resolution that can be independent, of course, with some restrictions, I will, I will say. So how to impose the boundary conditions? Given uh, a Lagrangian point, so this is the triangle centroid, we build a support domain on the Eulerian mesh, including 
uh, a number of points that in 3D is 27 and we compute the, the, the forcing, first the velocity and then the forcing to impose the boundary condition on the Lagrangian structures. We use moving least squares approximation, that means that the variables, the Lagrangian variables are interpolating using these neighbors of the Eulerian mesh and this phi here is obtained by uh, a moving least squares uh, um, a minimization problem. Finding this velocity on the Lagrangian marker, we can find, of course, the forcing to impose the boundary condition where this V high is the velocity we want to impose coming from the structural solver or from the boundary condition of the body if, it's, uh, if it has a, an imposed uh, movement. And then we, we need to spread this Lagrangian force back to the Eulerian points. So what we do here is to split uh, to spread these uh, uh, Lagrangian forces obtaining the Eulerian forces on these nodes and this is done using the same phi, the same coefficient but scaled with this CL here, this coefficient that has to, to ensure that the total forcing is the same considering both Lagrangian and the Eulerian meshes. So this is how we evaluate the forcing imposing that the forcing the total forcing on the uh, Eulerian volume is equal to the Lagrangian forcing considering <coughs> the height of the body, that, that means that it's a layer uh, in, uh, in the vicinity of the body with the, um, with the sides that is comparable to the Eulerian grid sides in that point. Another crucial part of the algorithm is the evaluation of the forces. Since we want to impose the boundary condition, we are uh, ensuring that the velocity of the solid is equal to the velocity of the fluid and this is done imposing the forcing terms in the Navier-Stokes equation for the fluid part. But then we have to impose also the continuity of the forces on the surface. And since we want to be accurate both globally and locally, we decided to evaluate forces uh, using probes. So, given a Lagrangian point, we send two probes, one in the normal direction and the other in the opposite normal direction and we evaluate pressure and velocity gradients on these two probes. In this way, we are, out of the, we are far from the um, forcing region and we can obtain very smooth uh, fields for both velocity gradients and, and pressure. I will give you just an example here. This is how we evaluate the, pro the pressure on the body, where this is the pressure on the probes and this is the acceleration of the marker in that point. That, 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 this is, of course, the momentum equation in the normal direction to the body at, at the wall. Uh, this is, the, for example, a, a filament flapping uh, uh, inside a, a flow and this is how, what we can see, what, what we can obtain uh, locally. So this is the pressure distribution, this is the pressure coefficient on the no positive normal direction, this is the pressure coefficient in the opposite normal direction, and this is the skin friction coefficient on both directions. You can see that we still are not solving all the problems of wiggles in the, in the vicinity of the body. That is a, a known problem in the mass boundary community, but we can obtain very smooth forces uh, both locally and, and globally. Now moving to the structural part, and this is the weakness of my, of my approach with respect to your works, uh, we are using a very simple approach since we have the, the surface of the, of the structure that is triangulated and we have the mass on the nodes, uh, at this point, we had uh, springs uh, in order to model in-plane energy terms. Of course, the springs can be linear, non-linear, in order to mimic different uh, uh, elastic behaviors of the structures. And we can also have bending springs uh, between two triangles. So when we have two triangles sharing one edge, we evaluate the angle between these two uh, normals, and we can, we can add a, a bending uh, uh, spring in order to, to have like shells or something related to the bending uh, uh, part. Of course, we can have a relationship between uh, the elastic constant of the <coughs> springs and uh, the mechanical properties of the material. This is an approximation, of course, and of course it, depend, it depends on the discretization. And uh, we are using this uh, relation here to impose uh, the Young modulus and uh, the thickness of the material and the bending modulus here. It is important to say, given the flexibility of this simple model, we can also have different constraints like uh, area and volume cons uh, conservation constraints if you want to model incompressible cells or inextensible cells like the surface of a, a red blood cell. Then, taking the gradient of these potentials, we can evaluate the forces with they are what we call internal forces on the nodes. So, we have elastic forces, bending forces on this node. So what we do, for each of the nodes of the structure, 
we solve the dynamic equation using both the hydrodynamics and internal forces evaluated, as I show you. Uh, here is just an example of a complex material we are modeling, like in the case of uh, the bioprosthetic valve, aortic valve, we can also model, of course, again, in an approximate way, hyperelastic and anisotropic behavior of the structures with very good results, as I will show you. Then we have the fluid structure interaction coupling, and we do this uh, iteratively, so it, it costs a little bit because we need to solve the problem in a strong way. Equations are, are advanced in time simultaneously, so we are, we are using a predictor corrector approach, the fourth of the Hemmings uh, method, uh, when we solve first the flow equation, then we evaluate the forcing, then the structural equation, then again uh, the, the flow, and this is done iteratively until the error on the velocity of each point is below a certain value. That means that we have an average number of iterations that is uh, usually about two, two, four, from two to four. So that means that we need to solve at least two times the flow uh, equation and at least two times the, the, the structural equation. Just a few words about the collision modeling. We are using special etching. This, is, this comes from uh, computer graphics. So we have the primitives of the structures and we, we build the etching tables. And we are using very simple collision te techniques here, like uh, Leonard Jones potential or something a little bit more complicated. So we can handle structures that go through these thin uh, two plates or structures colliding with, with each other. Uh, but this is an approximation. So I, I saw a very nice contribution yesterday. I think this is another place that we are, where we can uh, improve the model. We have uh, validated the model in several cases. And this is an example of flapping flag in, uh, in a free stream at the Reynolds number of 200. Uh, we have this density ratio of the structures. And we can see that the, the, the model recovers the second order accuracy both in space and time. This is an example of the drag coefficient in time, and you see it is very smooth, and it's very, uh, it has a very good agreement with other uh, approaches in the, in the literature. So let me go fast about applications. This is an example of plates, deformable plates falling under gravity. I'm showing the out-of-plane vorticity contours. This is the decreasing the bending stiffness. So this we are having the fluttering behavior with this combination of fruit and Reynolds number, but we can also have tumbling behavior, and this is well captured by the clothes, and you can see this is a medium bending, bending stiffness problem. We have used the same approach to uh, study jellyfish propulsion, like the one here, because given the simplicity of the solver, we are adding uh, springs in, uh, in, in the sense that we want to mimic muscle, muscles. So uh, we can have this geometry that shrinks and opens and we can evaluate the uh, velocity and the uh, forces uh, of, of the propulsion in different uh, geometries like prolate and oblate ellipsoid in this case or even for more complex structures like these micro robots here. This is a bio-inspired origami designed uh, structures, that is a cube that is unfolding, and we can mimic the anguilli form, carangic form, or medusoid motion, depending on how we move the faces of this, uh, of this cube. Then, of course, we can run the simulations with the FSI, so we can evaluate the vertical structures downstream of the, of the different models, and evaluate also velocity and forces in the, in, the, in the forward direction, depending on the case, looking which one is better in different situations, of course, depending on the Reynolds number. Okay. Other, other applications, uh, this is about the transport of nanoparticles. We can add springs in order to mimic uh, the ligand recept uh, receptor uh, uh, part uh, uh, regarding adhesive particles, so we can have particles that can be activated, ligands that can be activated, and adhere to the endothelial wall, depending on the structures, or transported by red blood cells in a, in a, in a boundary, in a, in a channel flow, or also these can be bubbles. So this is a, a, a huge simulation. So we have 100 million points. We have 120 bubbles. Each bubble is described by uh, 1,000 triangles, uh, about 1,000 triangles, and these are Taylor Quet flow, so we have two cylinders rotating with different velocity. You can see that here the collision model has put in, in good effect, and 
but this of course is, this, this simulation is run in parallel so it, it doesn't run on, on my laptop so please let me show you some other results of, about my may may I shortly please okay this is my main field the, the flow through aortic valves so basically you have two choices when the valve is damaged mechanical valves and the bioprosthetic valve so the idea is to use the same tool to simulate these kind of problems uh, but the problem is that we want to be very accurate because the flow field is important to uh, be in order to be related to the blood damage of cells so this is the validation this is a mechanical valve and this is the comparison with experiments in Rome La Sapienza this is the leaflet dynamics and these are different velocity profiles downstream of the valve uh, with the same approach we we simulated the Bentham procedure, that is the use of different grafts uh, when also the aortic uh, channel is damaged. So we can have a straight graft or a graft that bulks up with the sinuses of Valsalva. And this is usually done with a mechanical valve. So this is the two models. So here also the, the, the structure is deforming and we can evaluate the stresses where the two coronary arteries are connected to the to the structure. Of course, in this case, we have that the, most of the stress is concentrated here, so this should be better than the straight tube, that is the the one used now. With the same technique, we modeled the bioprosthetic valve and we validated with the experiments from the valve manufacturer, that is the Saint Jude. So we have a very good agreement during opening. We have snapshots at different time instants. So given the simplicity of the model, this was for us a very good uh, result. We can model the ventricle, the left ventricle, and we have experiments in Rome where we compared also the position of points on this silicon, silicon rubber ventricle with very good agreement with experiments. And then, I'm really finishing, we use the solver to uh, study different valve models. So this is, I will be here. This is the flow field through these three different kind of valves: the bio, bio, bio leaflet mechanics, the bioprosthetic valve, and this the three leaflet mechanic valve, mechanical valve. So different flow fields, different level of stresses, and uh, different results. I think that I don't have time. So let me let me go far fast to the conclusions because of course we can use it also for the red blood cells and this is my conclusion slide this is a very short overview uh, let me stress this future work you can see my limitation my the limitation of my approach is that I need a very accurate and efficient structural solver and I saw a lot of contribution these two days I think that this could be a very large uh, work we can do together. The contact modeling for rigid and deformable structures should be improved and also we, we want to refine the mesh both locally uh, locally for both Eulerian and Lagrangian cases and a better representation of the geometry. This is what we want to do and I think you can help us in, in this. Thank you.